Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about another kind of white blood cell that's part of the innate immune system, and these are what we call natural killer cells. Now, natural killer cells are a type of lymphocyte. Okay? There are three major types of lymphocytes we're going to encounter. The first is the natural killer cell, which is part of the innate immune system. The other two lymphocytes are called B cells and T cells, or B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. These are not part of the innate immune system. Those are actually part of the adaptive immune system, and those will be discussed later. But just understand that natural killer cells are a part of the innate immune system, but they are derived from lymphocytes. Sometimes we call natural killer cells NK cells for short, and they're called natural killer cells because they basically just survey your entire body and look for anything that's abnormal. Okay? This process is what we call immunological surveillance. Okay? So they're always on the lookout for anything that doesn't appear quite right, or anything that appears foreign. And the way that they recognize something as being foreign is they look for what we call a self-antigen. Now, again, I always mention this, we haven't really talked much about antigens yet, we will in a later video, but let me kind of give you an, a, a brief analogy for what an antigen is. An antigen is just basically a name tag, okay? Um, all organisms, regardless of whether they're bacteria, your own cells, they all have antigens. They're basically name tags. So we can have two kinds of antigens. We can have a self-antigen and a foreign antigen. Okay? A self-antigen is basically a name tag that you would wear that says, I'm a part of the host. So you're watching this video right now, you are a host. Right? Your cells that make you up are your own self cells and they will display self antigen. So your liver cell, your heart cell, your muscle cells, they all display self antigen. And it's basically a name tag that says, hey, I'm a part of the host, don't hurt me. And so the natural killer cell won't hurt those cells. But then there's foreign antigens or abnormal antigens. So a foreign antigen would just be an antigen displayed by something that's absolutely foreign. Okay, like a tissue graft from another person, those often get rejected because of this, or a bacterium, clearly a foreign invader, that's an abnormal antigen. Or you could have what's called an abnormal self-antigen, which is basically a self-cell that has somehow become aberrant. It's become cancerous. And so when, oftentimes whenever self-cells become cancerous, they start to displaying abnormal antigens or abnormal self-antigens. And these are basically just name tags that say, hey, either I'm foreign or something's wrong with me, okay? And I need to be destroyed. So an analogy to help you kind of understand self-antigen versus foreign or uh, abnormal antigen would be like if you had two very rival sports teams. And the first example that comes to mind is the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics back in the 80s. They used to hate each other. Um, biggest rivals in the National Basketball Association. And it'd be kind of like if you were in the LA Lakers locker room pregame and someone with a Celtics jersey walked in. Okay, it's, that's clearly somebody who doesn't belong in that locker room. Okay, um, LA Lakers jerseys uh, yellow and purple, Boston Celtics is green. Okay, you can immediately tell based on that name tag, so to speak, that they don't belong there. And that's kind of what natural killer cells are looking out for. They're just looking out for abnormal or foreign antigens. Okay, and if they see any like that, they destroy it. Okay, so how do natural killer cells do this? Well, first of all, they recognize that you have an abnormal self-antigen and they stick on that cell. Or if it's a foreign antigen, they stick on that cell. Now imagine we've got a cell membrane here of one of those abnormal cells. Well, a cell membrane is designed for two things. Okay? It keeps the internal contents in and the external contents out. If you poke a hole in that membrane, the cell is no longer going to be able to regulate its internal environment and it's going to die. Okay? So basically what natural killer cells do is they release some proteins called perforins. These are kind of cylindrical looking proteins and what they do is they arrange themselves in a circle. And these perforins are named as such because they create a perforation in the cell membrane. That just means they create a hole. And that's bad for the cell that gets those perforins because now it has a hole in it. The cell membrane is no longer 
no longer has its integrity and it cannot regulate the internal contents from the outside. But if that wasn't enough, the natural killer cells are going to go a step further. They're going to release some enzymes called granzymes. Granzymes just basically move through this hole and into the cell. And what the granzymes do is they stimulate apoptosis of that cell. Okay? So it's not just a violent explosion like the Death Star. Um, basically, it's a controlled death. So granzymes are enzymes that induce apoptosis. And what apoptosis is, is controlled or programmed cell death. So basically that cell will die and all of its contents can be recycled. Okay? It's a whole process which we're not going to go into here, but it suffices to say the granzymes will induce apoptosis and the abnormal cell will die. Okay? So basically the way to conceptualize natural killer cells is once they recognize that you have a foreign or an abnormal cell, they just take a drill and drill right through the cell. Okay, picture a drill. They just drill right there and they drill a hole in and then it's like they dump some salt in the wound, right? They dump some stuff in through the hole and then that's what ultimately kills the cell. And there's going to be, as I mentioned, several types of cells which you're going to expect natural killer cells to destroy. One of those is infected cells and that can be infected with a virus. Transplanted tissue, um, if you get a liver transplant, let's say, um, we can have tissue rejection. One of the ways tissue gets rejected is natural killer cells will just attack it because if it's from another person that's not closely related to you, um, it has a very foreign type of antigen on it and the natural killer cells recognize that and will destroy it. And of course one other cell type I should mention that gets destroyed here by natural killer cells are cancerous cells. Okay? So if a cell becomes cancerous, it usually starts displaying abnormal self-antigen and the natural killer cell will recognize it and destroy it by this mechanism. Okay? Now this mechanism by which natural killer cells kill the foreign or abnormal cells is called the perforin pathway because it involves perforin proteins. And it's not just important to understand because natural killer cells do it, but there's another reason. We're going to later encounter another cell type called T lymphocytes, which is going to be in the adaptive immune system. And it's actually only one type of T lymphocyte. There's a cell we're going to see called a cytotoxic T cell. Okay? And these cells are going to destroy other types of cells by the same mechanism. They're going to use the perforin pathway. So we're going to encounter this again in the adaptive immune system. Okay? But hopefully this gave you a good understanding of natural killer cells. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.